All right, this next section is very similar to what we do in 090. We're just taking some paragraphs, turning into equations, and solving. Dealing with applied problems. So what do we do when we have these? How do we handle them? Read the problem, figure out what the heck they're trying to ask us to solve for. Assign variables so we don't have to use a bunch of words. Build a system of equations, solve it, check in the original, make sure it's actually true, and then write a sentence at the end to state your answer. We're just going to practice a couple of these. Very first, a rectangular soccer field may have a width between 50 and 100 yards and a length between 50 and 100 yards. Suppose that one particular field has a perimeter of 320 yards. Its length measures 40 yards more than its width. What are the dimensions of this field? So in the very beginning, do we care about the fact that the soccer field may have a width between 50 and 100 yards or a length between 50 and 100 yards. No, it just kind of gives us a general idea of how big the thing is, but it's not specific. The parts that are specific are what we're going to use to build our equations. So the first, suppose that one particular field has a perimeter of 320 yards. What does it mean to be the perimeter of, in this case, a rectangle. Perimeter of something is all the way around the outside. So if we add up length, width, length, width, or two times the length and two times the width together, what will it give us out in this case? 320. So that's our first equation in our system. This bracket notation is just what I use, so we can group together our two equations that we're going to work with. So that's the first, but again, we have an equation in two variables, and we need it in terms of one. The other piece that they gave us was about the length. Its length measures 40 yards more than the width. So length is 40 yards more than, so 40 plus, our width. And we called it W. I think in this case, it's so explicit, we don't have to say what L and W are, but we will write it down in the end in our, in our answer. So in this case, think back to 090, how do you want to solve this? We have a couple different methods to work with. We can either graph, which is going to be time consuming, and I didn't give you a grid, so that one's probably out. Second one, substitution, super helpful if one variable is already isolated on its own. And do we have that? We sure do, but our other option, again, just to review, is the elimination when they're all lined up and our variables have opposites, so that when we add them together, it disappears. But in this case, I think substitution is the best because L is equivalent to what? 40 plus W. So wherever we see an L up in equation 1, we're going to plug in 40 plus W. So I'm going to label these 1 and 2 just so we can write down what's happening. So when you come back later, you'll understand what you were doing. So we're taking 2 and we're substituting it into 1. Wherever I see L, I'm plugging in 40 plus W. So 2 times 40 plus W plus another 2W gives us 320 altogether. Now we have an equation all in one variable that we can solve. So what should we do next? have to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So what do we get now? 2 times 40 is 80. 2 times W is 2W. We can't forget about that second 2W. So combining our like terms, we've got 4Ws and 80, giving us 320. Trying to get W on its own, what's got to go? We'll subtract 80 from both sides. So 4W is equal to 240. Getting W alone, we'll divide both sides by 4. So W is 60. And what are the units on this? In our example, dealing with a soccer field, and our units are yards. And they did tell us they'd be between 50 and 100, so we fit within those parameters. But we're not done there. We have the width. How do we go for the length? Plug it back into either one of these. What's the easiest one to plug back into? The second. I know the length is 40 more than the width. So what does that mean for the length of this? 60 plus another 40 
is 100 yards. And again, it fits, has a length between 50 and 100 yards. How can we check? Plug them in, make sure both equations are satisfied. And at the end, we want to write a little sentence. So we can check, we might as well. Into the first equation, 2 times 100 plus 2 times 60. Is that really equal to 320? 2 times 100, we're talking about 200. And another 120, that gets us to 320. That one's satisfied. For the second length, 100, is that really 40 plus 60? Sure is. Both of them are satisfied. So the sentence at the end can be really short. All we have to say is the dimensions are 60 by 100 yards. Fits within our parameters we checked. It satisfies both of them at the same time. The next example. For the 2010-2011 National Hockey League and National Basketball Association seasons, two hockey tickets and one basketball ticket purchased at their average prices would cost $156.16. One hockey ticket and two basketball tickets would have cost $149.57. What were the average ticket prices for the two sports? So very first, what are they asking us to solve for? What were the average ticket prices for hockey and for basketball? So I'm going to say let's let H be the hockey price and B, basketball. Basketball price. We know the units in the end, we're dealing with money. So building two equations from this information that's given. The first piece, what do they give us? Two hockey tickets and one basketball purchased would have cost 156.16. So two of our hockey tickets, two times H, plus another basketball ticket gave us 156.16. We have one equation, but we need two to work with. So the next piece, one hockey ticket and two basketball tickets would have cost 149.57. One hockey, two basketball, 149.57. Now in this case, we again have the same methods to work with but there isn't one variable that's alone. So let's use the elimination method just so we review that and can get comfortable with it. So let's just say I want to eliminate the H's. The LCD, or least common multiple between these, is two. So we already have a two on this first equation on our H, but we need this to be the opposite. So we have to alter the bottom equation by a factor of what? Negative two everywhere. So we can scale every single term by a factor of negative 2, so that when we add those two equations together, one of those variables is eliminated. That's why we call it the elimination method. So what do we get out? I haven't touched the first equation, but I am going to write it down again. But now, negative 2 times each of these, what do we get out? So negative 2 times h, we get negative 2h, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4b, and it's equal to negative 2 times this value. We can't forget the one at the end. So 149.57 times negative 2 is negative 299.14. So now with these equations, if we combine them together, if we add them, how many h's do we have? I had 2h and I took away 2h's. So those are gone. How many b's do we have? Negative 3b, when we add down. Negative almost 300 holds more weight, so this value is going to be negative. 142.98. And now we have an equation just with one variable that we can solve. We'll divide both sides by negative 3. So our b value, negative divided by negative is a positive. Okay, they wouldn't pay us to take the tickets. We have to pay for them. What is the price for a basketball ticket? 47.66. But we also want to figure out the hockey. So we can plug it into any one of these equations. 
And I'm going to pick this second one because H is already not alone, but it doesn't have a constant out front. It's a little bit less work. So we're trying to solve for H, and I know that the basketball price is 47.66. One hockey at two basketball tickets was 149.57. So let's calculate what is the actual cost of a hockey ticket. Two times 47.66, we get 95.32. And how do we get H alone? Subtract that value. Minus 9532. So H is equal to what? Still positive. We've got 5425. A little bit pricier to go to a hockey game than a basketball game. How could we check them? Plug in both of the values into both equations. Make sure they're satisfied. And at the end, we write a little sentence. So the price of a hockey ticket is, or was, in the past now, 54.25, and basketball, 47.66. Again, we could check, plug them into both equations, make sure they're both satisfied. How many ounces each? of 5% hydrochloric acid and 20% hydrochloric acid must be combined to get 10 ounces of a solution that is 12.5% hydrochloric acid. So what do we ask for? How many ounces of each do we need? So they're different by their percentage of acidity. So I'm just gonna call them X and Y. I'm gonna let X be the amount of the 5% acid solution. And Y be the amount of the 20% acid solution. Other one we have to work with. So we have both of those. And in the end, how much do we want to have in our tank? What are we making? We're making a solution, and how much of it do we need? 10 ounces. So I'm pouring in X amount of the 5%, and I'm pouring in Y amount of the 20%, and I need 10 out in total. So our first equation is pretty easy to build. I'm pouring in X from the first and Y from the second. Together we need 10 ounces in the end. Then the hard part comes from the actual acidity of the solutions. So in the end, we know we need 10 ounces. That is 12.5% hydrochloric acid. So, how much acid, how many ounces of acid are in the solution at the end? I have 10 ounces in total, and only 12.5% of it is acidic. So, how could we calculate out how much acid is actually in that solution? Well, how do we figure out what 12.5% of 10 is? We multiply them together. So I know in the end, in total, I had 10 ounces, and it was 12.5% acidic. So whenever we have a percentage, we need it in decimal form. So take the decimal, move it two to the left. 10 times 0.125 will give us the total amount of acid in the end. Okay, what is 12.5% of 10? And the other piece that we have I have the amount that I'm pouring in from the 5% acid. So again, how much acid do I actually gain from this first pour? Well, it's 5% acidic, and I'm pouring in X amount, much like we had over here, our amount times the percent. Amount that's unknown times our percent. And in addition to that, how much acid are we gaining from our second amount? Well, it's 20% acidic, and we're pouring in Y ounces. So again, our units should always match. Ounces plus ounces equals ounces. Percent times amount plus percent times amount equals percent times amount. We should be similar across the board. So when we look at these two equations, the first one I like, that's great. Easy numbers to work with. But here I have decimals, and we don't want to deal with decimals. So, 
how many decimal places do we have to move in order to get to a whole number? If we were going to kind of circumvent that decimal problem. Well, what does this one do for us? Takes our decimal and moves it one to the right. So I've got 1.25. So I would have two decimal places left to move here, one there, two here to get to whole numbers. So we should multiply this bottom equation by what to get rid of all the decimal places? We need to move it twice, so we multiply by 100. So we have an equivalent system when we do that. We haven't touched the first equation, but now what do we have out? 100 times 0.05x takes the decimal point, moves it two to the right. 0.2 now becomes 20y. 10, again, moved it once, times 100, moves it twice, so we get 125. I like those numbers better, but again, we can have calculators, so it doesn't really matter in this class. But how do you want to solve? Let's go back and practice the substitution method. Both of these have coefficient 1, so they're nice. If I want to get y alone, how do we get rid of x? Subtract it from both sides. So wherever I see a y in my second equation, I'm plugging in 10 minus x. So we get 5x plus 20 times 10 minus x. That's equal to 125. Now we have an equation all in x. Let's distribute 20 in to get rid of the parentheses. We've got 5x, and what do we get now? 200. 20 times negative x is negative 20x, and it's equal to 125. All right. Combine in like terms. How many do we have? Negative 15x plus 200 is 125. Starting to solve to get x alone, we have to subtract 200. So I've got negative 15x is negative 75. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So that works out. We shouldn't have a negative amount. So x is equal to 5. And 5 what? What does x represent? The amount of acid. And our units for amounts in this example were ounces. So we need 5 ounces of the 5% acid. So what does that tell us for the amount of the 20% acid? Together, they had to make 10 ounces, so we need another 5. So our y value, again, just to say, we know this is true, and x is equal to 5. So our y value is also equal to 5. We need 5 ounces of each of those to produce the correct mixture. So we'll say that in the end, we need 5 ounces of the 5% acid solution and 5 ounces of the 20% to make what? 10 ounces in the end of a 12.5% acid solution. How do we check them? Plug them back in, make sure it comes out to be true. Last example in this section deals with distance, rate, and time. So two executives in, a, in cities. So this last example deals with distance, rate, and time. We're going to be using our DIRT formula. So let's see. Two executives in cities 400 miles apart leave at the same time to drive to a business meeting at a location on the line between their cities. They meet after four hours. Find the speed of each car if one travels 20 miles per hour faster than the other. So I think it's helpful to draw a picture with this. What's happening? We've got two different executives leaving from two different towns. And they're meeting in the middle on the line between their two cities. But one is going faster than the other. So even though they're traveling for the same amount of time, one is going to go farther than the other. So I'm just going to say A, he goes a little bit farther. So picture-wise, he might be starting here, but he's going to make it a little bit farther than how far uh, Executive B has to travel. Maybe they meet at this line between their cities, 
and one is going faster. So they're definitely going to travel farther. But in total, how far apart between A and B, between their cities, how far apart are they? This total distance spans 400 miles. And we know that they both traveled for four hours. So I know that T is equal to four hours. Distance between them, 400 miles, they both traveled for four hours. But what are we asked to find? We want to figure out the speed of both of them. So we know we have a relationship between distance, rate, and time. So we need our dirt formula. Distance equals rate times time. So we have a distance to work with. We have a time to work with, but what about their rates? Well, one is going faster than the other. So I'm just going to say it's guy A. He's going faster than guy B. So if guy B is traveling at a speed of X miles per hour, how much faster is this executive A traveling? 20 miles per hour faster than the other. So if this guy is traveling at X miles per hour, this one's going farther, traveling faster, specifically 20 miles per hour faster. So how do we calculate out the distance that executive A traveled and the distance that executive B traveled? Because I know that A is going to travel farther. They still were only driving for four hours apiece, but he's going faster, so he's going to make more distance. So again, distance is related how? Rate, how fast each of them are traveling, times the time. So the distance for executive A, how far is he going? Well, how fast was he going? X plus 20 miles per hour. And how long was he traveling for? Four hours. So four times X plus 20. That was his distance. Executive B, he was going slower. He was only going X miles per hour. He was traveling for four hours, so his distance was four times X. But I know this distance altogether was how far? 400 miles. So I know that 400 miles comprised of what? How far executive A traveled, his distance, plus how far executive B traveled, his distance. Some of the two gives us the total distance. So we could write out a system of equations, but sometimes it's easier just to draw a picture to visualize what's going on, like this case. So we can solve this. Let's solve for x. And how do we go about doing that? Distribute in 4. We've got 400 is 4x plus 80 plus another 4x. Combining our like terms, 400 is 8x plus 80. We need to get x alone, so we'll subtract 80 from both sides. So we've got 320 is 8x. And 8 goes into 320 40 times. So x was what? Drawing in our picture, what did we have it represent? The speed of the slower person. So our units on here, 40 miles per hour was the slower driver. So the faster driver was driving at a speed of another additional 20, 60 miles per hour. So the slower car, slower car travels at 40 miles per hour. And the faster at 60. And this one will be super simple to check. Because again, what's happening? First one's going 40 miles per hour and he's traveling for four hours. Four times 40, what are we adding on to that? How fast is our other driver driving? 60 miles per hour times four. Add them together, what do we get? Distance of 400 miles. We always have a check in this class.